Like, for example, a plus b, that's a binomial, all right? a minus b, that's a binomial. Now, sometimes it helps. It's beneficial if you have something like a minus b to write it as the sum of two terms. So that, for example, would be a plus negative b, right? So you're still adding two terms, it's just that one is positive, one is negative. Now, we can take a binomial and we can raise it to any power. We can raise a plus b to the power of 0, 1, 2. And, you know, early on, like in Algebra 1, we learn something like this, a plus b to the power of 2 right and we learn a shortcut for this and we say the shortcut is what a squared plus 2ab plus b squared now that's just raising it to the power of 2 I could raise it to the power of 9 right and I could still generate those terms without having to multiply a plus b by itself nine times okay to help us do that okay now that we know what a binomial is um, Remember, it's the sum of two unlike terms. Um, so what we're going to do is first we're going to create a pattern for the expansion. This is what we call it, an expansion of binomials. It means taking a binomial and raising it to a power. And let's, let's do it to the first few integers here. So if you have a plus b to the power of 0, right? Well, that's just one, right? And what happens to a and b? They have coefficients a to the zero, b to the zero, exponents of zero, right? Anything to the power of zero is one, and you can see here that this is just going to equal one, okay? Now, if you have a plus b to the power of one, then that's just going to be a plus b, right? Um, writing it in a more expanded form, that's 1 a to the 1, b to the 0, remember that just goes away as 1, 1 a to the 0, b to the 1. So if you were to simplify that, what would you get? a plus b. Now, if you have a plus b squared, we just, you know, instinctively we say, oh, that's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Well, here, if you have a squared, what's the coefficient, uh, what's the exponent of the b? It's b to the 0. And then you have 2, a to the 1, b to the 1, b squared, a to the 0. Okay? Um, similarly, if you have a plus b cubed, this is how it looks. So what we want to do now is we want to observe some patterns. Okay? Let's take a look at exponents first. All right? In the first case, so the exponent is n here. When n equals 0, let's look at the expansion. What are the exponents for a and b? 0, 0. Now, in the second case, when n is equal to 1, I have a to the 1, b to the 0. And then a to the 0, b to the 1. Let's take a look at when n equals 2. Let's look at all of the exponents of a a to the 2, to the 1, to the 0. Let's look at all the exponents of b. b to the 0, 1, 2. Do you notice a pattern? What's happening to the exponents of the a's? It's decreasing. And what's happening to the exponents of the b's? Increasing. From what number do they decrease and to what number do they increase? To the n. Okay? Right. And now let's take a look at coefficients. What's the first coefficient always? What's the last coefficient always? One. And what's in between? Just a mess of things. All right? Well, okay, so let's take a look at some more patterns here. In the first case, when n equals zero, how many terms do you have? One. When n equals one, how many terms do you have? Two. So in each case, each expansion has n plus 1 terms, okay? The first and last terms are always a to the n, b to the n. Now, 
what about the sum of the exponents? Let's just take a random term. Okay, so for the, for the n equals 2 row, let's take this one. What's the sum of the exponents? 2. For the n equals 5 row, let's take this one. What's the sum of the exponents? 5. So the sum of the exponents is always n for each term. Okay? Take a look at another one from that last row. What's the sum of the exponents? 5. The powers, like we said, decrease from n and then, you know, increase to n. And the coefficients display a symmetric pattern. So if you were to, like, split this down the middle, right, and if you were to look at the left and the right, look at the coefficients. In each row, they're symmetric. Like in the n equals 4 row, you have a 6 in the middle, 4s, 1s going out. Okay? Now, can we generate those by ourselves? Well, sure we can because of this guy, Pascal's triangle. I'll talk about it now. Pascal's triangle um, helps us come up with these coefficients. So these coefficients are called the binomial coefficients, and they can be arranged in triangular form. And since Pascal came up with it, and it's a triangle, we call it Pascal's triangle, OK? Very um, mystical. OK, so each term, here we go. This is what you need to know. Each term is the sum of the two numbers above it. OK, so for example, the first one is 1, and then you have 1, 1. Then look at this 2 here. It's the sum of the two that come right above it. OK, so look at this 4 in the you know two rows below. It's the sum of the two that come right before it. So the way you would figure it out is this. Um, we call this the n equals 0 row, and then this is the n equals 1 row, and then this is the n equals 2 row. Now, suppose you wanted to generate Pascal's triangle on your own. It's really easy. Here's how we start. We start with a 1, and then 1, 1. Now, every other row is going to start and end with a 1, and the term in the here you add 1 and 1, you get 2. So look, I have a 1. I add these two, I get 3. I add these two, I get 3. And I end with a 1, right? So 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And you could, you could go on for like days, man. You could, you, you could go on for days, literally, OK? So for example, if you're raising something to the power of 6, right? You have n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This would coincide with the row n equals 6, and those would be the coefficients of each of the terms. Are we okay with this? Okay, so here, use Pascal's triangle to expand each binomial. So here we have um, 3x plus 2 to the power of 5. So my coefficients are going to be the n equals 5 row. So this is n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, right? This is 4, and then this is 5, right? So this is n equals 5, this row. Okay, so those are going to be my coefficients. Now, this is a, and this is b, okay? So in each case, okay, A is first going to have the maximum exponent and then keep going down. So the coefficient is a 1. And then I have 3x to the power of 5, 2 to the power of 0, plus then the next coefficient is 5 from the triangle, 3x to the power of what? 4, 2 to the power of 1. And then it's 10, 3x to the power of 3, 2 to the power of 2. What else? 10, 3x to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3. And then it's 5, 3x to the 1, 2 to the 4. And then it's 
one, sorry. One, three x to the power of zero, two to the power of five. Okay? And then you are going to have to simplify all this, right? So it'll be 243 x to the 5 plus 5 times 81 x to the 4 times 2 plus 10 times 27 x cubed times 4 plus 10 times 9 x squared times 8 plus 5 times 3 x times 2 to the 4 is 16 these days plus 2 to the 5 is 32. Okay, so at the end of the day, we clean it up. Uh, sorry? Right. Oh, sorry, fifth. Mm -hmm. And that's the expansion. That's the binomial expansion of it. Okay? Now, should we do another one or are you guys okay with this? Okay. If we have time and we're bored, we can come back. So the only thing for the other one is your x is your a. And how much is B? B is negative 2Y, so you have to take the negative along with it, okay? So for example, what would the first term be? It would be 1X to the 6, negative 2Y to the 5th, okay? Uh, to the, sorry. Okay, all right. So now, let's talk about the binomial theorem, okay? The binomial theorem, is this how to come up with the coefficients because I mean it's also kind of tedious to sit there and draw that triangle every single time right okay um, you guys remember what a factorial is so if you have three factorial that's that exclamation mark it's right it's all the numbers multiplied together until three so basically it's three times two times one that's equal to six Okay. Now, the binomial coefficient. So, suppose all I wanted is not this. All I wanted in part A is the coefficient of the 1, 2, 3, 4th term. That's 720. Okay. Do I really have to do this whole thing to figure out that that coefficient is 720? Well, no, because the binomial lets me just get to it like that. Okay, and guess what you will be doing on the final? Doing Just that. that, okay? Oh, you do, yeah, you have to, yeah. I don't, I have oh. uh, multiple questions. So, the binomial coefficient of the, of the, of a, of a term is given by this, okay? Yeah, and now, the way we expand it is this one. So at each step, okay, so do we remember what this combination is? Okay, so here we have C, N, R, right? And the formula is just N factorial over N minus R factorial, R factorial. So what does all that mean? N is the exponent, the main exponent, okay? R is um, like which term you are in the sequence, okay? So R is which term you are in the sequence or in the expansion, okay? All right. So take a look at this one, for example. This example here, a plus b cubed, this is n, right? 
Now, R is, which term is it? So this is the zero term, so R is zero. This is the first term, so R is one. This is the second term, and so on. So here we have A cubed, okay, so N, N minus R, N minus zero, B to the R, B to the zero, okay? All right, so let's let's do this one using the binomial theorem. Wait, that is, only binomial, uh -huh. like it, well, but you'll see the benefit in a little bit. Okay? Yeah, you'll see the benefit in a little bit. So, for example, suppose I'm doing C, 3, 2. Okay? 3 is your N, and this is your R. So if you plug it in that formula, it's n factorial over n minus r, 3 minus 2 factorial, r factorial is 2 factorial. So this is 3 factorial over 1 factorial, 2 factorial. So this is 3 times 2 times 1 over 1 times 2 times 1, and look, the the last two cancel, so that's just the three. Okay? No, that's one. Three factorial will give you three times two times one. What factorial? Yeah, we just did factorial a few minutes ago. Fact I don't understand why you moved that. Where did I move like things? From, from factorial to three times two times one. Okay, so remember what we were doing here. What a factorial is, like you learned back in the day, is three factorial is just three times two times one. That's how it's defined. So if you have five factorial, it's five times four times three oh, times okay. three times four. Okay. Yeah. Yes, then. Okay, here. So let's do let's do this first one now. Here is what you have, right? Okay, so that's your n. So what you're going to have first is this, C, 3, 0, okay? Now, I'll, I'll fill everything in in a little bit. The next one is C, 3, 1. Um, uh, yeah, the next one is, no, C, 3, 2. This is always N. This is constant, and this is the number of terms. Like, this is a zero term, first term, two term. That's the R. Plus... You have C three three. Okay? So your R has to go from zero until you equal N. And then how did the um, coefficients look? The coefficients, I'm sorry, the, the terms it's A cubed B to the zero, A squared B to the one, A B squared. Uh, a to the 0, B to the 3. Okay. Look at these A's. The first term, it starts with the maximum exponent, A cubed. Yes? A cubed. Yeah. And then it goes down. Remember that's what we're doing before? A to the 3, 2, yeah, 1, I just, 0. I don't see why this is different. I was different than that. Okay, you'll you'll see. It's not different now. We're going to generate the same numbers, okay? But you'll see the benefit in a little bit. So what is this? What is this first term? It's going to be 3 factorial over 3 factorial, 0 factorial, right? So look, it's n factorial over n minus r, r. No. Zero factorial is one. Zero factorial is one. Just remember that. That that's okay. Um, I don't have time to prove it, but it is one. Zero factorial is one. Okay. It's three factorial over two factorial, one factorial. A squared B. And then it's 3 factorial over what? 1 factorial, 2 factorial, AB squared. 3 factorial, 
zero factorial, three factorial. B cubed. Okay? Well, because it's n minus r, n minus r, and then r. Okay. So in each time you subtract and then you put the second one. So the first one, the difference, the second one. The first one, the difference, the second one. The first one, the difference, the second one. Okay, so if zero factorial is one, three factorials go away. So we have a cubed plus, what's this? Three times two times one, and this is two times one, so it's just three. What's this? 3 times 2 times 1, and this is 2 times 1, so it's just 3. Okay? And these will go away. So now let's see what we have. 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. Okay, so that's the binomial theorem. So think of it as you can do it using Pascal's triangle, or you can do it using the binomial theorem. And yes, you should know how to do both. Now, you can figure out these coefficients using your calculator. So, in your calculator, suppose I want to calculate uh, C3, 2, right? Suppose that's what I want to calculate, C3, 2. What I do is, oh, what happened? What I do is this. You enter n, that's 3. Now, you press math, and then you go to the PRB tab, and you want the combination, the third one, and then that second number is 2. Enter, you get 3. Okay? Yeah. Uh-huh. So zero factorial is one. Okay. Um now here's a hint for successive steps, enter second answer and 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 edit. So you see how for these all of the ends are threes, right? They, you have the same n, it's just that the r is changing. So for the next one, for example, I do second enter, and then I'm just going to edit that to a 3. Okay, so you don't have to tap the whole thing over and over and over again. Okay, so now, here is where we're using this. Find the coefficient of the indicated term in each expression. So we want the entire coefficient of the indicated term. Okay, now... Um, here we go. So here we want a minus b to the 10, right? So imagine, how many terms does that have? a minus b to the 10. 11 terms. I want the fourth one. So this tells me that n is equal to 10. And I want the fourth term. Now remember, you start from 0. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3. So how much is r? r is 3. r is equal to n minus 1. No, I'm sorry. r is equal to 4 minus 1. r is equal to 3. Because you start from 0. The first term is r equals 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. Now, here's what we're going to do. The formula, this is what you need to memorize because you need it for the final, is C, N, R, A, N minus R, B to the R. We're good? Say yes. Yeah. Okay. So C, how much is N? 10. R is what? 3. A, oh, hang on. How much is A? Well, let's say A is A. Right? A is the first term in the binomial. It's A. To the power of n minus 3, that's just 7. B is negative B to the power of 3. So, 
It's a minus b, which means it's a plus negative b. So now it's going to be 10 math. I'll get you in a minute. The probability tab, 3. 3. So that's 120. A to the 7. And from here we get a negative b cubed. So the coefficient, now this in its entirety is the fourth term. The coefficient is negative 120 b cubed. Okay, this problem is stated differently. 3x minus 4 out of the 8. What does 8 represent? N. Okay, now this term, remember the way it's given, it's a to the n minus r, b to the r. So what's the 7? The 7 is n minus r, okay? And this 1 here, that's your r, okay? So the first exponent is n minus r, the second exponent is r. Look, the first exponent is n minus r, the second exponent is r. So if n is 8, and if n minus r is equal to 7, then what's r? How much is R? 1. It's the second term, right? Yes, it's the second term. So now what I want is this. C, 8, 1, C, right? N, C, R. Okay, so 3x to the power of 7, negative 4y to the power of 1. Because I want this. And then a to the n minus r, b to the r. So when we plug that in, eight. What's three to the seven? That's a lot. Two thousand one hundred and eighty-seven. times negative 4, x to the 7, y. And if you multiply all of those, then the coefficient, then it's negative 69,984, x to the 7, y. So the coefficient is this. Okay. Okay, now, um, let me go to the one in the back, and then we're going to come back to this one, because that one's like the most fun for me, and I want to, I just want to relish that number four. Oh, that was sigma, sigma. Sigma notation. Uh, <sighs> so you see how we just have a counter that just keeps going and going and going and going. Okay. Okay. So, since binomial ex expansion is a sum, right? Basically, when we expand these, what am I doing? I'm doing like if I have a plus b squared, right? It's just the sum of three terms, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. It's a sum of a series. That's all it is, right? So, that means... I replace it by, I replace the combination term by this. And so now look, it says to represent the expansion using sigma notation, a lot easier than you think. It's basically r equals 0 to 17, okay? How much is n? 17 to r, okay, and now it's 3x n minus r negative 5y r, that's all, that's all you do, okay, that's the answer, <laughs> huh, well you're not putting in a value for r, remember? 
Yeah, so this is telling you that R is going to go from 0 to 17, and you're going to take combinations of 17 and R, just like this, combinations of 17 and R, and with these uh, terms. Okay? All right, now let's go and expand this using the binomial theorem because, again, you're going to have to do this on the final, so let's do it. Okay, how much is n? Five. n is 5. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Let's just do um, the coefficients first. So the coefficients, it's going to be 5, 0 is what you start with, right? And then I'm just going to leave a little bit of space and go C51, C52, C53. Oh, now I'm going to run out of space. C54, C55. I left too much space, but it's okay. Okay? Now, the stuff inside the terms, it's going to be 2T to the 5. And if you want, you know, you could like divide and conquer here, do an assembly line system. Two t to the one, two t to the zero. And then what's the next term? Three u to the zero to the one squared cubed, boy, I really didn't, to the 4, to the 5, okay, now, calculator time, so it's going to be 1, and, not 1, 5 and 0, Huh? I'm just going to plug them in now. So 5 and 0 gives you 1. 2 to the 5 is 32t to the 5. Plus, okay, next one, I do second enter and just edit this one. So I'm going to get a 5. 2 to the 4, 16t to the 4 times 3u, you guys with me, plus 2, uh, change that to a 2, and I get 10, 16, 10 times 2 cubed is what these days? 8t cubed, 9u squared. Now look, is this the middle of it? Is this the middle of it? What are the next coefficients from the binomial? Oh, same thing, 10, 5, 1. You see how simple it is? So now it's going to be 10 times 2 squared is 4t squared, 27 u cubed, 5 times 2t, 64u to the 4, no, 3 to the 4 is 81, sorry. And where are we now, the last one? 1 times uh, 3 to the 5 is 243u to the 5. And then you just multiply all this out, and we get 32t to the 5 plus 240t to the 4u plus 720t cubed u squared, 1080, T squared U cubed, 810, TU to the 4, plus 243U to the 5.
Okay? And that's that, yes.